I'm here today with your fatty body. The rugby league player, footy show host, and former Queensland State Origin coach. I am going to talk today to Fatty today about how disability has impacted on his life, both with his brother, but also him personally. Are you okay? If I ask you questions around these issues, Fatty. Yes, I am. You can ask whatever you want. So, Fatty, I want to have a talk to you today about a few things. I would like to ask you about your family. Whereabouts did you grow up? And can you tell me about, about your family? So, Fatty. Yes, I grew up in uh, Brisbane. I was born in Brisbane in 1959. That's a long time ago. Can you remember that? No. And uh, I was uh, mum and dad. I grew up in Everton Park in Brisbane, a suburb there. Uh, mum was mum came from a place called Hewenden in northwest Queensland. Dad came from Bowen, which is up in North Queensland. And uh, I was the third child. I had a, an older sister, Deborah, uh, an older brother, Jeffrey and the younger brother Russell, and we all lived together. Um, yeah, so we had a great childhood growing up in Brisbane. Can you tell me about your brother Jeffrey's disability and your best memories of him? Uh, Jeffrey was uh, our uh, mum and dad's first born, and he was uh, in Down syndrome. Um, but uh, growing up with him, I never saw him as having a disability. He was just one of our family, and although he was different, um, we loved him uh, very much. He was a good boy, and uh, when when mum had her fourth, fourth child. Uh, it was decided mum and dad thought it was best to put him into a home and he went to a home when he was about 12 or 13 up at Goodna. And uh, he lived a pretty good life there. We'd go and see him nearly every weekend. We'd get in the car and drive up to Goodna and say good day, and we'd spend the afternoon with him. And occasionally he'd come home for the weekend, but he, he liked it where he was. Um, lots of Down syndrome kids lived there and, and uh, he, he enjoyed that environment. Uh, but we loved it when he came home. And we used to have a lot of fun with him, actually. He was a, he was a good lad. Uh, he had a pretty good life, actually. Uh, pretty good life. He, he passed away about two years ago at the age of 57. Now, when he was born, actually, the doctors said to my mum in 1951, they said, oh, Down syndrome, he won't last till he's uh, 20 or 21. But he got to 57, so uh, he, he had plenty of ticker. But he was good. special school they had uh, up at Goodna, where, where they all lived, they went to a special school. Um, I, I remember actually when I was growing up as a 9, 10, 11 year old, uh, sitting with him on a Sunday afternoon and uh, trying to teach him to read. And he couldn't really catch on to the reading, he, he couldn't really read. But um, we also tried to teach him how to tell the time, and we've had a lot of fun doing that. Um, and I tell you what he liked to he, lo he loved to wrestle. And we'd have uh, we'd have well he was about um, eight years older than me, but we used to have wrestling matches. And he was very strong, you know, as a teenager, very strong. And he used to beat me all the time. I couldn't beat him, but he yeah, he was good fun. Physical or mental, 
And, uh, you know, I, I treat them like any other human being. We're all, we all make up this world, we all get our own little space. Sure, some people might not be travelling as well as others, but, you know, I can see that you're a beautiful young lady. You know, I don't see you as having a disability. You've got a big future in your, in your life, so, you know, I, I don't really put people into categories. I think we're all the same. your openness with those questions. I am sure you miss your brother, Alan. For those that do not know you yourself, had an accident while filming a while ago. Can you share what happened? Yeah, I can. I was actually uh, in, in a truck, uh, and we were in sumo suits. We were supposed to do a special little thing that was supposed to be funny. Uh, but Three of us from myself and Paul Harrigan, Matthew Johns are in the truck, front of the truck, and we were in these big suits and I, I slipped and fell out of the truck onto the ground, which was cement. Now, because we didn't have helmets on, the sumo suit hit the ground first, and there's a big gap between my head and the ground. The sumo suit absorbed some of the, the fall, but then my head just went bang like that. Now, I was pretty sick. I was unconscious for about three minutes and um, Paul Harrigan brought me around and then I started to vomit soon after that. Uh, so I was pretty ill, so I ended up going to hospital for two days. Uh, and then, as a consequence, I was very sick for about 10 or 12 weeks after that. I just wasn't myself. Uh, I struggled with balance. Uh, my memory was struggling and physically I just wasn't well at all. Um, you know, that was six years ago and time is a great healer and I feel as though I'm just about just about right. Now I actually thought I was pretty right for probably a year after that, but a lot of friends now tell me that I was pretty ill for a long time. I wasn't I wasn't myself, I wasn't fatty so to speak, you know, but I think I'm back now. I think. So effectively you yourself have disability. How did this affect you then, and how are things going for you now? Yeah, I saw it not as a disability, but as a, it was a physical impairment that I had. That you know, my mind and my brain was swollen for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, as I said about the times a great healer, and I just gradually, with patience, you know, you've got to be patient a lot of times with things. And I became very frustrated, and at times I got very depressed, mm -hmm. thinking that I'll never come good. You know, I'm going to be stuck in this. I was in bed for a long, long time, for about three or four weeks initially, before I started to get up and walk around. But the doctors encouraged me to try and live my life to the fullest and like I normally would, like you. So, you know, once I got up and started moving, I got a bit better. And it was a pretty ordinary patch of my life. But you know what? In that, I've got my own family now around me, my wife, and I've got two daughters and a son who are in their 20s. And, uh, you know, they all stuck with me and with their love, it always helps uh, to get better. I think diversity is an awesome thing and necessary in Australian culture. What advice would you give to young people leaving high school and may not have had experience with people who are different to them? Well, just take it easy. Don't, don't, you should never prejudge people. Right? You should never prejudge them because they might have some sort of ailment. I mean, as I said before, we're all human. I think there's a lot of decency in every human being. And uh, I'm sure you might have been a victim in the past. But, you know, as you said before, life is changing and all of our views are changing about a lot of things. And, uh, you know, you've got to treat people with love. Love makes the world go around. Thanks for answering my questions around your family. I am halfway through a journalism degree, and as journalists we have to ask the tough questions, the questions the public want us to hear. This segment I am naming Marlena's names mumblings, and have asked my friends to ask what they want to hear. I am not responsible for these questions. Ooh. Would you like to proceed? Yes. What do you think about fighting the rugby league? What is the best?
surprised by you had ever been in. And how did you go? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't a very good fighter. I'm a, I'm a, not a bad lover, but uh, not, not a very good fighter. Um, I, I, I actually could have got involved in a lot of fights in rugby league, especially in the early days, in the late 70s and early 80s, but I just couldn't get over the feeling that would happen if my fist actually hit a guy and it broke his jaw. I wouldn't like that. That's why I decided not to get into many fights. So I think I had one, maybe one or two over the, about 13 years. So. No, I, don't, I don't, don't really believe in fighting. Some people, some rugby league players think they're tough because they can throw a punch and fight, but you know, I just played for football and didn't get involved in the fighting. Don't like it that much. Personally, between you and me, that fight last week was pretty good. Reminded me of state of origin passion. Next question. How does it feel to know that you will not have the opportunity now to become Australia's first red-headed male Prime Minister? <laughs> Good question. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I didn't really want to be Prime Minister. I'm not sure how the current redhead's going, actually. She's under a bit of pressure. But I'm happy just to get on telly and wobble my head and have a good time. Good question, though. Mario Fenech portrays himself as not being the most intelligent person in the world. Is this how he is in real life, or is he just a really good actor? What you want me to say here? <laughs> Now what you see on the telly is what you get. He's a fairly simple human being, but I've got to say he's a very close friend. We get on really well. Uh, as I, I'll tell you something, one day we were down the beach doing some filming and I said, oh Mario, look at that dead seagull. And he went, where? I've got a million of them. But he's a, he's a really good guy actually and, and we love him very much. He plays a really good role on the show. Done that has scared the shit out of you, and would you do it again? I won't go on it with you. <laughs> now, my days of doing those rides are gone. I, very, I got very scared. The Bombatron was horrendous. Uh, we uh, water skiing, we bungee jumped, fallen off cliffs, been in mo motorbikes, fast cars. Uh, it's just been, it's been a good ride, but we're all a bit older now. And we're all the guys late 30s, early 40s, now I'm 52. And uh, those days are behind me. Thank you. one bit of advice, what would it be? Never kick a turn on a hot day. Is that one of yours? I would say, always be kind to your mother. Your mother's the most important person in the world. And don't eat too many pies. Yesterday I was chatting to Wally Lewis. Got their nickname, the king, and you got fatty. You don't get to pick your nickname, but are you pissed off about yours, and what would you pick if you could have picked your own? Do you want me to show you why they call me fatty? No, I better not. Um, now, I got that nickname when I was 19. I went down to Manly, and uh, an old coach there said he'd never seen me before. I was from Brisbane down in the Sydney, you know, the, the big smoke. And he said, hello, he said, who's this little fatty there? And 
Graham Eady was standing next to me, and Graham was a great plug manly player, and he said, Fatty, he said, I like that, that'll stick. So that's why I got Fatty. I don't mind, I think it's a very nice nickname. I think it suits me. Round, cherubic face, you know. What would I like to be called? Just the legend. That'll do. This is Paul Vorton. As we all know, disabilities can affect anyone at any stage, at any time. Uh, but you know what? I had a brother, Jeffrey, who was Down syndrome. Never saw him as having a disability. He was just my loving brother. 